Hey, how you going everyone? And welcome back to another episode. Uh, this one's about the um, wiring that I've done in the caravan and how I've wired the fridge and our charger up. Um, we had a few questions from the walkthrough video, so we thought we'd do a little bit to um, explain it all to you. So I'll start off the, um, the wiring that I've used to install um, the charger is 6 BNS, 13.5 millimeter squared. It's a bit above what I needed to do, um, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And all my fuses and stuff um, are as per the recommendations of installing these products. Um, I will start out and say that I sort of do this for a living. Um, I do this on planes. I work with wiring um, on planes. So I've got a bit of a background in it. Um, but don't take what I say as um, correct. Do your research. This is what I've found. Um, if you're not confident, go to an oil electrician and get them to do it for you. But you can mention that this is how you'd like it set up and they could watch the video and help you out. Um, but I'll kick it off. So what we did, I pretty much deep in the 12 pin plug. So your, um, your fridge wiring ran off two of the bigger pins and I've put it into an Anderson plug. Uh, I did this because I saw a lot of comments where the 12 volt plug was melting and um, I just didn't want to have that so I just went straight to an Anderson plug from the get go. So the standard wiring runs through to here. Um, from what I did here, so this here is where the wiring runs to from the um, trailer plug. So these are the two points here. I uh, took the Existing, so that runs to your fridge uh, for future, um, so you understand what's happening. That used to run to the fridges. So what I did was took the fridge wiring out and then I installed um, some new, I went six millimeter squared wire and then poked it back up through the floor. And I'll show you where I've run that through the caravan. Um, and the 10 millimeter squared wiring that Jayco installed from factory, I pulled that back through um, to where the batteries are. And I'll show you that when we get down the back. So this here is where the, um, the fridge wiring runs to, the back of the fridge here. Um, it's easy to get into, there's these two little clips. Um, if you zoom in on that up here, these two little clips, you just push them up um, and then you get access to the fridge compartment by pulling it out. So this is where um, the wiring ran from down there um, that we just showed you to up here. So what I did was pull that wiring through into where the batteries are in the back of the van. Uh, and I'll show you that in there. All right, so um, this is under the beds where the wiring comes up from underneath, uh, where we showed you where I jumped into the original factory wiring under the van. So as you can see up here, uh, these two red wires um, are the wires that I've run coming up from underneath. and they run along the floor or the bottom of the van, the hallway to the back. All right, so those wires run under the cabinetry, the whole way from the front of the van to the back of the van. Um, and yeah, you just gotta pull the stuff out, just tuck it along the back and work your way down following the factory wiring. Um, if the microwave's out, it makes it really easy because there's a little split in the back to run it across um, for you. Um, then under the fridge, and into the back here. Um, so the um, wiring that I ran is these two just here, uh, and they run down to the Red Arc BCDC 20 charger. Um, this charger is only for DC to DC, so it doesn't have a solar regulator input, um, which if I was gonna do this again, I would buy one that has the solar input, uh, and then you can take the J-Hub out of it all together and just have the J-Hub manage the 12 volt inside the van and the charging's all done by the red arc. Um, so yep, so that's where the wiring runs to. Um, and then you can see, so this um, this set of wiring up here, the ones that are together, um, that's the original wiring that ran for the fridge to the drawbar. Um, this now runs just directly to the batteries uh, and it's got a circuit breaker on it in case uh, it trips for whatever reason, it's still safe. So, I pretty much took the um, the 12 volt wiring from the 12 pin plug uh, for the fridge 
ran that back to the batteries and then put a new set of wires in to the Red Arc charger, which charges the batteries while we drive. So the Red Arc charger is really good because uh, it's got an automatic voltage cutoff, which means that we don't have to unplug any uh, plugs on the car when we stop. Uh, <laughs> I did get caught out once. I wasn't aware that Jayco tap into the um, electronic stability control circuit and run it as an auxiliary circuit to the J-Hub as a battery charger. So if you look down in um, here, uh, it's very hard to see. I might get the torch. You can't see, you gotta look straight down. Like that. Um, so as you can see, the, the um, second lot of terminals have been empty. So that's an auxiliary charge. Um, so it was very easy to do. All I had to do was just disconnect um, these two sockets here. Um, and now I don't have that issue. So whenever we pull up somewhere, we can just leave everything connected and the car won't, um, the car batteries won't go flat. The um, red arc will stop that from happening. And the fridge will just run off the caravan batteries whilst we're inside still being charged by solar on the roof. Um, that's all the J-Hub manages now, is the solar on the roof and the electronics inside the caravan when we're using them. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you might recall in our um, walkthrough video, we, um, I, I complained about how Jayco put the two batteries side by side in this compartment and then you can't use the bunk access door at all. So whilst I was out here tidying everything up to do the video for you, I um, gave it a crack and I've managed to move the batteries around so we can actually use the full access door now, which is really, really good. To do that, I had to move this cross support beam back about, oh, I don't know, maybe two inches or an inch, um, just to be able to fit this battery in lengthways beside the wheel arch and the bar. Um, and then I've just tidied everything up and moved the jack across from next to the uh, access door as well. And as you can see now, we could fit a full length chair in here um, if we wanted to. It just gives us options and more space usable because under, under the main bed um, is pretty full with chairs and tables, etc. Um, but yeah, that's, um, or the other one to note is that when you have two batteries, um, so pretty much my positive loads come off one terminal and then your charging loads go onto the other positive terminal. And the same with the negatives. So the negative loads come off the opposite terminal and the negative charging load goes on the opposite terminal, if that makes sense. So um, to try and simplify, so this here is where the positive charge goes in and this here is where the negative charge goes in on the opposite battery. And then for where I draw the loads from, my positive load comes from this battery and my negative load comes from here. So you sort of cross pull on your batteries. Um, and the same when you charge, you cross charge. It just helps um, keep your battery health up. If you do put them all on one terminal, it will work, um, but you'll have a lot of terminals on those um, studs. Uh, if you have any more questions about what we've done or how I've done it, uh, let me know and I'll try and help out uh, the best I can to explain it a bit further. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. We're going to be able to use this space now, which is really good. Um, and everything's all nice and neat and easy to maintain now, which is great also. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching another one, guys. This one's just a short one. Um, but if you'd like any more detailed run-throughs on anything in the van, let us know and we'll do our best to get them out there for you. But until next time, thanks for watching.